exactly who we are and what this church is all about. Well, we'd like you to know that we're a group of ordinary people who are on an amazing journey together following Christ. Our guide is the Bible because it's the divinely inspired Word of God and it will never take us in the wrong direction. Along the way, we hope you'll see that we are welcoming and spiritually passionate and that getting to know you is a big deal to us. We know that the road is rough sometimes, but we'll work really hard to bring you practical and relevant messages to equip and encourage you through life's ups and downs. We want you to know that we care about this community and we believe that it's our job to make it a better place. So no matter who you are or where you've been, we're glad you're here with us today. And we hope that you'll join us on our journey, following Christ and living out His plan for us. So welcome to church. Aloha kayaka kaku. Aloha guys, how you guys doing today? We're here live at Weird Mall. Yes, the bell rang. Check them out, check them out. Come church first. <laughs> want to praise and thank God for uh, this beautiful day. We thank God for bringing us here all safely over the mountain. What a beautiful uh, blessings we had this morning coming over the mountain. And the sun is out. And it's packed here today. So come on down. Squeeze them on in. And we got Molokai in the house. Our kahu here. Yeah. Woohoo. Let's get into our worship this morning. We're going to give raise the roof here. We're going to shake up the noodles. So the baga ono. All right. I believe, 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 I believe,
so long. So long, bye bye. So long, bye bye. So long, bye bye. So long, bye bye. Goodbye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, bye bye. So long. So long, bye bye. So long, bye bye. So long, bye bye. So long, bye bye. Goodbye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, bye bye. Goodbye. Goodbye to my pain and my sorrow. So long, bye bye. Goodbye. Goodbye to my pain and my sorrows. So long, bye bye. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. We continue to worship with our Savior this morning. What a beautiful day to praise His name. Thank you, Lord. Woo, gonna give God our hearts this morning. Lord, we open our hearts to you. Have your way. This is my desire to honor Thank 
give you my heart, I give you my soul. I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I give you my heart. Give God the praise this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Woo. Let us pray. Pulikako. Ehova Hemalele. Kia koa ika hiko ia. Ika nani ka ihi ihi a meka hana hana. Ke ho oma ika ike ho zana ke mililani. A ho ho akune mako ya oe. No laila. El ho mai oe ka poe ka ua. Ia koko mai nei. E ho mai ka ia mako, a me ka mako mauhana, a e launa pu mai ko u hani hamalele, me mako i koliki ai ka mako lave lave ana, me kau i make make ai. No laila, e ho onani ia ai oe, i loko u ka inoa u ka makua, ke keiki, a me ka u hani hamalele. O holy Jehovah the God, it is filled with splendor, sacredness and beauty. We thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you this morning. Therefore, have mercy upon all of us who are gathered together. Bless us and our work. Let your Holy Spirit, Lord, shine upon us this morning. Rain your love upon us so that we may be able to do thy work according to your will, Lord. Therefore, we praise thee in the name of the Father and of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit, we all say, Amen. Good morning. Whew, what a beautiful day it is. How's your guys weekend? Good? Yeah? So far? So far, so good? All right. Oh, my God. Huh? Blessings, blessings. All right. Well, well, let's, let's greet each other this morning. You know what to do. If you're online, don't forget to push that like buttons or share. Because you know why? We're together again. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. We're together again. In one accord. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. And we're in more. 
We're together again. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. Just praising the Lord. We're together again. Just together again. In one accord. In one accord. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. Something good. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. Yes, we're together again. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. One more time. We're together again. We're together again. Just praising the Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. We got a few announcements. As I put that down, we'd like to let you know that God is good today, all the time, not just today. And you know what? It's the last Sunday of August. Next week is September already. I cannot believe it. This month kind of flew by. This whole this whole year is flying by. I cannot keep up. But that's okay. It's okay. It's not for me to keep up. It's me for catch up. <laughs> yeah, I got to catch up. You know, like catch up and show you. So we're still trying to catch up. And that's okay. Because you know what? Sometimes you got to go at your pace. Or sometimes God slows us down a little. Like how the kupunas over here, hey, slow down, you're going too fast. Put it on turtle. And I said, no, cannot. Because God, 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 he get me at high speed sometimes. And not just at high speed, he give me all the obstacles. Lucky thing, this scooter can turn all the corners and fit in all the little corners. All right. But, you know, once again, just to let you know, Bible studies, hey, I just want to let everybody know. This Tuesday, I turned on the Zoom room. Guess who popped up? Auntie Doris. Hallelujah. Auntie Doris, she was, yeah, she might be watching right now because we said the Sunday is supposed to be setting her up. They got her on computer, set her up for a Sunday service so she can watch us. And also f for Zoom on Tuesdays. <laughs> so, you know, if Auntie Doris can do it, we can all do it, right? Hallelujah. But if you're not doing nothing on Tuesday nights, we do have Bible studies here in the book of Acts. It's awesome, good fun. And, wow, this, this Tuesday was so surprised. We got, we got to talk to her for like 15 minutes. And then they had to hook her up to her feeding tube. So then we got into a Bible studies. But she was still on there for about an hour. And it was just a blessing to see her face on our, on our uh, Zoom cameras. And it was nice because everybody got to say hi. Because if you don't know by now, Tuesday nights is our uh, prayer time. Not just for Bible studies, but that's our prayer group. So every time anybody asks for prayer, I always Zoom. I mean, I always text everybody in our prayer group so that they can all pray because we study and we learn and we're all geared to pray for, for each and every one. So I want to thank uh, Brother Butch and his wife for setting Auntie up, surprising us on Tuesdays. And, and Auntie, if you're on there now, we love you. We miss you. And we can't wait till you get back uh, on your feet. And here at Wimward Mall, you, man, this place is cranky now, Auntie. You're missing out, but that's okay. God is good. All right. I know, she cannot wait. You know, we told her, oh, Auntie, we're going to go Windward Mall on Wednesday. She, she looked at the, the sun and said, hey, am I going to? <laughs> and she said, no, no, not yet, not yet. So then she turns and says, hey, uh, by the way, where's my mango? <laughs> so she's, she's, um, she's doing great. She's actually eating a little bit. 
I think uh, they said that she ate applesauce, but she still has the feeding too. But slowly by slowly, um, it's getting stronger, being able to swallow. And I think they even went sneak in some boy and fish, I think. I don't know. Or some, what is that? Fa. I know she like fa. So I want to praise God. And speaking of which, next week is September. First week of the month. So where are we going to be next week? Kapiolani Park. You know where? Right across to the tennis courts. On the the bigger Batcham side. Right under the big trees. And hopefully we're going to get the same tree in the front. Um, so same time, 10 o'clock. And it is potluck. And then it is communion Sunday. So for those of you online, we're going to be uh, doing communion on first Sunday. Have your elements ready so you can join us for co our communion. We do our communion right after our service. We're right into communion service. And then we pull it for the food and we cow cow together. Fellowship. Are we having bingo, brother? Pastor bingo? All right. We get bingo too. If you like play bingo, you got to come on down. Yeah. And they do give prizes. <gasps> God is good, man. All the time. He give us prizes. And he give us some, you know, get choke food. So come on down and have fun with us at the park, Kapilani Park. Hey, by the way, just to let you know, if you don't know, it's actually Labor Day weekend. Monday is Labor Day. Okay. Yeah, Monday. So might be a little busy. Might want to come a little early. But I, I'm not worried because last, last time you guys all came early, man. Oh, shocked me earlier. And uh, and then the following Monday, we'll be right back over here at Wimbledon Mall. Same place, same time. You know, we got to come early because people come in early now. Over here. Wow, today was crowded early. Next week, Sunday. Next week, Sunday, Kapilani Park, following Sunday, right back here. And speaking of Labor Day, so just for you, music, entrepreneur things, or, you know, this so was mainly for the guy, but they never show up. Auntie Christy and Conchita, they love music. Monday, Labor Day. No, not Labor Day. No, it is Labor Day. September 4th is Labor Day. Right here, they'll be having a fundraiser for the Maui uh, Lahaina, especially. So for the Maui, they're having a, it's called Maui Aloha. So I want to share this because we come here at Red Ball. And it's going to be right here at Minimo, a benefit concert for our Maui Ohana um, live music from 12 to 6 p.m. So come on down for lunch, stay for dinner. Right here, they're going to have live, live entertainment. Oh, look, there, see? And they also, got, they also have donations. So If you go and look at one of the uh, postal boards, there's a QR. Yeah. No, we're not good enough. They got a um, QR code, too, that if you want to make donations, should be on one of the posters. So look for them next week, uh, Monday. So next week, Sunday, Kapilani Park, Monday, right here for some live music from 12 to 6 p.m. All right. Kalamai. Okay, we're going to get right into our scripture reading for today. We're going to continue on with our last session of taking the time. And since this is our last session of this series, let's all take that time to breathe. Everybody breathe in. Breathe out. One more time. Breathe in. And breathe out. Ooh, it's a good way to start the morning. Remember, God is our refuge. Our scripture reading for this morning is going to be found in the first, uh, the New Testaments of 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19 to 23. You're right, Auntie. You get chill. Okay. Yeah? You get enough room. Okay. Good morning. Hi, Auntie Conchita. Monday. 
Labor Day, going to get entertainment over here, just FYI. 6 to 12, uh, 12 to 6. Monday. Let me say this again. Monday. You know what? You guys can look inside your, uh, well, it might not be in a program because I found out after I print them. Sorry. Maybe you can write them in your program Monday. September 4th. 12 to 6, right over here. All right, so our message this morning found in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Okay? All right. Ayako kako hello hello anna. Iloko o ka epistole mua o Paulo. Kaluna o lelo i ko korinecto. Mokuna eiva 9. Pauku umiku maiva. 19. Apana ikapauku iva kalua kuma kolu. Did I say that right? 23. Pene i pala pala ia. Verse 19. Here we go. Hekanaka ku oko a au. Aka hoi. Ua ho o kaua. Aku no vau na na kanaka. A pau, iloa anui mai la ko iau. A e waina au o na ya de, dayo. Ua liki au me ka ya dayo. Iloa ai iau na ya dayo. A i waina au ka poe maka Make kanavai, make kanavai ho i au, iloa ai iau, kapo e make kanavai. A i waina au o kapo e kanavai ole, ua like ho i au me ka mea kanavai ole, iloa ai iau kapo e kanavai ole. A ole ho i au, i ha a lele, i ko ke akua kanavai. Ma ke kanavai o Kristo vau. I waina au o kapo e, ma kau vale, ua like me ka mea ma kau vale ho i vau. I loa ai i au kapo e, ma kau vale. I waina o kanaka a pau. Lilo a ela au i nā mea a pau, i loa i ola i o ai ke kahi i ia u. Ke hana nei no hoi au i ke ia, no ka e wanaleo i loa a pū ai ia u ko laila hope. Our scripture reading this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verses 19 to 23, reads as follow. Though I am free to belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to someone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like not, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Let us all pray. Our great Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our scripture reading that we have in front of us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that 
my words be your words, my thoughts be yours. But Lord, let us open our minds, our ears, and our hearts to receive your blessings this morning as we focus in on what you have in store for us. Lord, may we fill our cup to the top and absorb your message. Give us the understanding and the wisdom so that we can go out and share and fill others' cup, fill others up with what you share with us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for all of us being here to hear your word. And we're excited to see and we're expecting the unexpected this morning. In Jesus' name we say, amen. All right. Well, it's a beautiful day once again. Our scripture reading found in the first Corinthians chapter 9. And the title of this message is A Different Approach. Okay? A Different Approach. Well, when Mary Slezer sailed to the African nation of Calabar, now Nigeria, in the late 1800s, she was enthusiastic to continue the missionary work of the late David Livingston. Her first assignment, teaching school while, leave, while living among fellow missionaries, left her burden for a different way to serve. So she did something rare in that region. She moved in with the people she was serving. And Mary learned their language, lived their way, and she ate their food. She even took, she even took in about a dozen of children who had been abandoned. For nearly 40 years, she brought hope and the gospel to those who needed both. Well, the Apostle Paul knew that importance of truly meeting the needs of these people around us. He mentioned in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4 and 5, that there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit, and different kinds of service, but the same Lord. So he served people in their area of need. For instance, to the weak, he said he became weak. So we're gonna we're gonna dig into our message for today, which talks about a different approach. Sometimes we gotta take a different approach, because what we are do we are called to reach others. Yeah, now if we come off uh, with our approach like way up here, but the people understanding is down here, they're not gonna make the connection. So we gotta kind of bring the level down so that when we speak when we share God's message, they understand. Yeah, when you share the message, they look at us like when blank. Or they just like loss, that we gotta change our approach. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And the first part about changing our approach is to have the freedom. First, we gotta have that freedom to share the gospel. And we're gonna take the first four verses, 19 to 22. And Paul asserts that he has freedom, he says, I have freedom to do anything. Yeah, in verses 19 to 22. I have the freedom to do anything. What does he say? Though I am free, though he says, though I am free, I belong to no one. He's free to serve. He's free to share the word. He's free to share the gospel. He says, I have made myself a slave to everyone. Not anyone in particular, but everyone. And, he's, and what his main goal is so that he could win what? He could win souls for the Lord. And he says, as many as possible. So he says, I have no ties, and he's open to all, not just the Jews, but the Gentiles. That thing was kind of simple. He was a Jew or he was a Gentile. I never had races or, you know, denominations. Was either you a Jew or you a Gentile? It is not an exclusive club or organization. Sometimes... Christians, we become, and next thing you know, it becomes like an exclusive club. Yeah? Oh, if you're not, you're not part from our other kind group, we can't, you're not in the club. Yeah? 
what do you call that? That's because that's the gossip club. <laughs> yeah? If we saw the gossip club. Yeah, but when we if we serve in God, it's it's the freedom. It you know, people say, Oh, can we can I come to you guys' church? Sure. Anybody welcome. In fact, I encourage you guys, invite them. I like meeting new people. Because you know what? I like that they, there's more people we, they can reach, uh, reach the Lord. We can reach them through others, yeah? So he says, it's not an exclusive, exclusive club. It's not even a specific race or color. It's not even a financial status matter, yeah? You don't have to be a lot of money or you don't have to even be low income. You can be whatever you like. He says what matters is that what he what was his goal. That's what mattered to him the most was his goal. And his goal was to reach as much souls as he can for the Lord. Let me share with you a scripture in Mark chapter 16. Read along with me. And I'm going to read verse 15 and 16. Amen. We good? You got him? Okay. Verse 15, it says, He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all generations. Underline that word, all. He shared to all. He never said only to the Jews, only to the Gentiles, only to the good-looking people, yeah, or only to the, the needy. He said to all. Verse 16, he says what? Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Yeah, and that was Peter's goal, was to reach everybody so that they too could be saved. But the trick was having them to believe that God is real, God is alive, and God is salvation. And the only way through salvation. But he also emphasizes a life of strict discipline in 1 Corinthians, the ending part of 24 and 27, that the Christian life involves both freedom, he says, but also discipline. And the goals for Paul's life were to glorify God and bring the people to Christ. So let's, I'm going to read, I think it's in your notes, but let's read what he says in verse 24. Chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. And he says that, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? And he says, Run in such a way as to get the prize. Yeah? He says, Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. This is out of the scripture now. I'm not making this up. It's right out of 1 Corinthians in verse 25. He said they go to strict training and they do it to get a crown that will not last. But, he says, we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Verse 26, it says, Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not run, I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. In 27, he says, No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Woo! Strong words. Yeah. What we do here, what we do when we share, he says, do it as if you're running the race. And sometimes how we can get there, when we practice how we share, when we practice about sharing the word of God, do that like you're running the race. Yeah? Don't do it like just running through the... You know, like musicians, eh? you know, when they practice, they're lazy practice. They just run through the song. 
And worship, we do that with worship sometimes. Well, let's just run through the song. But they don't put that full-on effort. You don't put your best. So basically what it is, when you give God, you're not going to give God part of you. You like give him your what? Best. Give him your best. When you share the word of God, share your best. When you do something for the Lord, do your best. If you're going to just be a greeter, greet people with the best. Best smile. Yeah. Good morning, guys. How you doing? Yeah. When you sing worship in the morning, sing as if you were singing them straight to him himself, which you're supposed to be doing. You're not singing for me. We sing to him. It's an audience of one, so we should be giving him our what? Our all. How many of us give him our all? Or we just give him a part of us? The other part is, is wondering what's, gonna, what, what's for lunch. <laughs> yeah? That's what he's telling us this morning. And, Paul say, and Peter says that he stayed free of any physiolog- physiolog- physiolo- philosoph- how you say this word? philosophical position. Not physiological, but philosophical position or philo- philosophical. There you go. I know it was one of those calls. One of those Philly words. Philosophical position or material entanglement. That You know, I practiced that word, but I never practiced like I was running the race. That's why. Shock. See? I tried to give it my all. Or, mar- or marital entanglement that might sidetrack him, he says. While he strictly disciplined himself to carry out his goal. He stayed free from what distractions or from being swayed. Some of us, sometimes we be swayed to say certain things. Yeah, oh, because I know that's what they like here. But that's not what God is telling you for say. But we're going to. We're going to do something. We don't like say it because we know they're going to get upset. So we're going to make it nice so they're going to accept it and they're not going to shoot me. Yeah, right? It's the way we deliver it. We try to, you know, instead of being what God is telling us to do, we try to bend our rules a little there. Yeah? And he stuck to the word. And what the Lord guided him to do. So that's what Paul did. He stuck to his guns. He stuck to his word. Yeah, he went up and up with the, the Pharisees and all that. They, know, they would thought he was nuts. But that's what God was teaching him to do. To stick to your word. Don't be swayed by these philosophers. I said it right. Don't be sw- persuaded by these philosophers. Yeah, and just because they get on petition, I mean positions, petition, hello, position, yeah, hey, you know, I'm doing that on purpose, right, I'm doing that on purpose so you guys paying attention, right, yeah, he said, don't be persuaded by the philosophers, don't even pers- be persuaded by your marital entanglement, yeah, which is your other half, yeah, your spouse or your kids, yeah, or your, your your parents telling you how to preach the word or what to do. What God tells you to do, he says, do it. He says, for Paul, both freedom and discipline were important tools to be used in God's service. So, the freedom to share the gospel, that's number one. Number two is having the right attitude. You got to have the right attitude. To share the gospel. And that's verse 23. It says, I do all things for the sake of the gospel. That I may share in its blessing. See, I like this. You know, the good thing I like about the scriptures. It says something and it gives you the reason why. He says, I do it for the sake of the gospel. Yeah, I don't do it because I like being the guy giving you the word. Or I like being the one that worshiping the song i do it for what the sake of the gospel knowing that why that's building my riches in heaven 
that I may share in that blessing, not just the people who are receiving the gospel, but me sharing the gospel will help me to, to, to uh, receive the blessings too. And Paul gives several important principles for ministry. So this is the one you might like take notes. Up to you. You like run the race or just watch the race? Up to you. It says find common ground with those you contact. And number one, this is what? Find common ground with those in contact. So you got to know who you are teaching and trying to reach. Who you are sharing the message and trying to reach. Yeah. So let me say this in a way. Yeah, if you go to Japan and you're trying to share the message in Filipino, what's going on? They have no clue what you're saying. So what you got to do? If you go to Japan, you need to understand a little bit of that language so that they can understand. Now, if you go to what? Philippines. Yeah? And you stay speaking Chinese. Yeah? Ni And they're like, Huh? They don't understand. So that's what he's telling us. You got to know your common ground. Yeah. So for Americans, if I have a, a congregation, like our congregation, more on the older side, I cannot be speaking like one young person because they're probably going to be lost. The connection, yeah? We need to make the connection. That's what he's saying. We need to make that connection. They need to know who you're trying to reach. And then he says, what is their culture? The age, the style, yeah? Yeah, so if I get a bunch of people that only speak pidgin and I'm trying to speak proper English, the, the brother's going to probably tell me, Pastor, pa, what you trying to say? Well, learn how to read the Bible. Huh? Say, hey, bro, you ain't crack open your Bible. Oh, I understand that, right? And that's what he's saying. You got to get into that culture. Get into the people you, you're receiving. Like when, when she went to, the to uh, what is that, Africa, what she did, she moved in and, and lived with the, the culture, getting to learn the culture. And, you know, this is kind of, Interesting for us is when we started, we we're supposed to start this church. There was supposed to be a pastor from the mainland coming in. He would fly in, but he didn't get to know the culture, so it was hard for him to move here. Or even when he come in to share the word, it was hard to reach because the people different, the mentality different. Yeah, mentality mentality from mainland to local is real different. So, I understand what this message was telling me because we went through that yeah you know every place is a, has a distinctive culture if you come from the mainland and try to start one church here the first thing you got to do is what know the people know the culture and how they live and how to relate to that and in order for us to relate got to move in we got to move in yeah because you know even like in Hawaii, when we get people from Molokai or um, Maui or, or, or Kauai, we just had people from Kauai that was in Pearl Ridge. Yeah? But when they walk in, they was talking with them, like, oh, where are you guys from? I know they wasn't from here. Sure enough, they was from Kauai. Yeah? Even like over here, you can tell sometimes if they're from Eastern or West Side. Yeah? The, 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 the lingo a little different. And that's what it is. In order us for reach, we need to, he says to, you got to have that attitude to want to change and blend so that we can reach. Because if we're not going to change, we're not going to blend into it, they're going, you know, it's hard to reach. But his attitude was to what? Reach as much people as he can. Running that race, submitting, yeah? Submitting to something that he's not in order to reach people. For the sake of the Father in heaven. Number two, he says to, so number one was what? Common ground, right. Number two is to avoid a know-it-all attitude. Whoo! 
Hallelujah. I know some guys, they get that know-it-all attitude. Yeah. Oh, but that's how I am. Yeah. That's how I am. And God is saying, I know that's how you are. That's why we need to change. Yeah. It's not about you know it at all. It's about submitting to what I call you to do and having that chance to make that change. In ministry, it's not about you. I was there. And I used to grumble to Jesus all the time. Lord, how come these guys don't get it? When they going to get them? And you know what he told me? Oh, they're going to get them when you get them. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, because it's not about you. See, that's what we get. We get so involved with, with the word sometimes. We forget about it sometimes. That it's not about us. It's about him. And we got to be preaching what he wants us to preach. That's how we reach others, is that we preach it. Because the anointment comes from who? Me? No. Who does the anointing come from? Him, who we serve. That's what anointing is. Yeah, It's an attitude of lifting, empowering, and encouraging others. Yeah, You don't have to be right. You just have to be righteous. The righteous love of God needs to shine through us so that when people see you, they hear you. They're not seeing you or hearing you. They see the light. They see him. That's what draws people to the light. Yeah. We are to be the light. Yeah. That what be that lit, uh, one little candle. We need to keep our candle lit. Yeah. So like our message last week, our candle cannot be lit. And then as soon as church power, blow the candle with somebody else. Yeah, because they cannot see Jesus when we turn them off. But that's how we do sometimes. We put Jesus back in our pocket or we turn off the switch. People don't can see. They're walking around in the dark. Oh, what happened to Jesus? Where he went? He was just here a minute ago. Right? But they lost. Let me share you a scripture. Oh, these are long scriptures, but this one has... A, a lot of meat, that's why. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 6. It says, If I speak in tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong. Woo. Or a clanging cymbal. It says, If I have the gift of prophecy, I can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have the faith, that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am what? Nothing. Nothing. And so verse 3 says, If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship, that I may boast and do not have love, I gain what? Nothing. Verse 4, it says, Love is patient. It's kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not all about me. It is not easily get to get angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices in what? The truth. So number two, we need to have that attitude, yeah? Common ground, then we need the attitude of not knowing it all. Number three, he says, make others feel what? Accepted. Make them feel like it's part of, you part of the Ohana, like how we do in our church, right? Hey, as soon as somebody come in, hey, come in, join the Ohana. That's why I kind of named this church Ohana, because you know why? God spoke to me when we took on the, this church and, and the name. We came from Light and Life Christian Fellowship. But then God said, I wanted to change the name. And God said, well, use this. Be a part of Hawaii. Put that word in there. What is the word? Ohana. What does Ohana mean? Family. What does Ohana mean in uh, Lilo and Stitch? No one gets left behind. That's what we're doing, church, as a gospel. Sharing the gospel. Because why? When we go to heaven, there's only be one family, one ohana. And we don't want to see nobody get left behind. Make them feel accepted, he says. Include them. And number four, he says to what? Be sensitive to their needs and concerns. 
He says, be, be aware of others around you. Work together in what? Fellowship. Togetherness. He says, be, be concerned. A word that I had to learn was discern. Be discerned. Yeah. Being discerned is like being considerate of other people's feelings and, and, and not. A lot of times when we, they like to use, church people like to use the word rebuke. Yeah. But then the rebuke can be sometimes turning off for people. But you need to be discerned when you rebuke. So rebuke is making corrections, stern corrections. But there's a way to do it. And discernment is a way of having what? What is that full letter word we talked about? Love. Yeah. Without love, all the work is nothing. Because love conquers all. Because God is love. Let me show you one scripture. Hebrews 10. 24 and 25. Now, this comes from the Easy Reading Bible, so it kind of explains it for me easier. Read along with me. It says, we should think about each other to see how we can encourage other to show love and do good works. Verse 25, we must not quit meeting together as some are doing. No. We need to keep on encouraging each other. This becomes more and more important as you see the day getting closer. Church, the end times is getting near. So what is he telling us? We need to be what? We need to be concerned about others. We need to be uplifting one another. It's kind of like, you know, when they um, do that, uh, what is that? What is that race you like, the mud one? The one they get that call out? Iron Man or not Spartan, when they get the Spartan race, yeah? You know when they come to that big wall, and you know not all of them climb over, but what they do, they send, yeah, they help each other over, the mount, over that thing just to get to the end line. And that's what he's telling us today. We need to help each other, lift them up. We can see them having a hard time. Hey, go over there. How's it, Brother Ambrose? You okay? You need some help? Encourage them, yeah? Because, hey, when we get encouraged, what happens? What happens when somebody help us to? Oh, we're happy. We feel good. We're like, we're like, join them, yeah? And then we join in. And that's what he's telling us. Help one another out. Help one another out. That's the way to get ahead, yeah? Because if we all be ourselves and we don't help each other, we're all going to lose the race. And he said to win the race, as the time's getting closer, which it is, Getting closer to the end times, we got to help each other out more and more each day. And the last one, five. He says, look for opportunities to tell them about Christ. Ooh, this is the part. See? What is the kind? One. When we find a common ground amongst others, and then we avoid... An attitude. And then what? We make others feel accepted. And we're sensitive to their needs. And concerns. That's when God going to give us the opportunity to what? Share the gospel. You said them. Sensitive to their needs. Number three is... Uh, make others feel accepted. Yeah, so when we do those first four things, then he frees that up for us. Yeah, he makes that perfect time for us to share the, worship, the word of God. You know, that happens a lot sometimes. Um, shucks, I just had one incident this week. I was talking with someone. And was talking about oh Friday at the at the beach. I was talking. I just met this this brother and um, Lorenzo's friend. One of no, it wasn't Lorenzo's. It was Alton's friend. And he came to the beach. And all of a sudden, he was talking. He was talking about the Maui and and all of that. And then and then he would open up the conversation because he told me oh 
he's because he's talking about you know when he go through stuff he says the mom always thought of hey turn to god and the, the mom is catholic i said oh wow and that went open up the conversation next thing you know we was talking more about the gospel sharing the word of god see how god opens up those stuff because why blending with the crowd make them feel at home because it's the first time joining our group of jam session made them feel welcome oh yeah Anthony, you was there right made them feel welcome and then next thing you know the fellowship start lifting one another up and then god made that opportunity for me to share the gospel that made my night that right that spot right there when i was talking with him about the lord made my day made my night so sharing the um Sharing a positive, uplifting word. That's the way of sharing the gospel. Sharing a smile. That is a way of sharing the gospel. Because you're sharing the love of Jesus. Yeah? These principles are just as valid for us as it was back in Paul's time. You know, in conclusion, one church I'm aware of recently announced the launch of an all abilities ministry approach completes with a barrier free facility making worship available for people with disabilities this is like this is the paul like kind of thinking that wins hearts and allows the gospel to flourish in a community. Well, as we live out our faith before those around us, I encourage all of you to just continue to share the love of Jesus and may God lead you to introducing them to Him in new and fresh ways. I'm going to close this and turn this over to my sister. She, 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 you know, we're always calling each other when they come into town or if I go to Molokai, you know, I always get the extra curriculums. So I, I, I told her, oh, you like share some words. I gave her the chance. I gave her the chance to go before me. But she wanted to go after because, you know, that's how. That's guts if I go after. I like going first. But, you know, I'm going to turn this over to my sister. She comes from uh, Molokai. Their church, she lives in Ho'olehua, but their church is on the east side, Halava Valley. And it's the only church down there. If you go to see the waterfalls, you got to walk past their church. It's called Jerusalem Maho. Um, so this is my sister. This is Kahu, Mary, and Ayo. I'm going to turn them over. Aloha, everyone. I really um, am, am grateful to be here today. Um, double blessings. I did a baby blessing yesterday. And now I get to come and see all of you folks. Um, I see you folks on TV Sundays. Um, not every Sunday, but the Sundays that I can join. And I told my brother, one day I'll come in and I'll visit your church. So I'm gl glad that um, I was able to be here today. You know, our, our scripture reading is so, um, it's simple and it's easy to understand, but sometimes we make it hard, yeah? Because all God wants is our, our heart, yeah? To serve him in any way, you know, it doesn't have to be like preaching the gospel. It can just be helping somebody, yeah? Somebody who needs help. Showing God's love is easy, but sometimes we make it hard, Yeah? Or, or we're sitting and we go, oh, how are they over there? You know, and then we're making judgment, yeah, which is, is not right. So we always have to be, remember, who do we represent, yeah? So who do we represent is, is the Lord. So how are we supposed to act, yeah? Like, we love you, yeah? I love you, Auntie, you know? And, and when you love somebody, you do your best for them. And that's not all God wants. Is us to do our best, yeah. And sometimes we're not we we're gonna fail, 
but it's okay. Yeah, because that's why Christ came. He bought grace. So grace is that we're forgiven. Yeah, my husband always used to tell me, oh, you know, I don't think God will forgive me. I don't think God will forgive me. I go, why do you have doubt? I said, if you serve God, you love God, then you need to try your best and do your best for God. And that's all you got to remember is that who you serve, you're serving yourself, then you're wrong. But if you're serving God and you do your best, you know, if you can just, even like people on the phone, you know, they used to be so grouchy when I, when I talk to them and they go like, blah, 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 blah. and I say like, well, you know, can you just help me? And then they'll help me. Then I go, at the end of our conversation, I always say, can you do one more thing for me? And they go, what is that? I go, have a beautiful day, you know? And they go, oh, thank you so much. I, I guess they're not told that many times, yeah, on the phone. But I always try to remember that you, you tell them, have a beautiful day. You know, that's giving them part of Christ, yeah, in a, in a different way. And so I've learned so much throughout these years. I learned so much to my brother. When I have certain things, I go, hey, you ever did this service? And he went like, uh, yeah, I did one. Uh, can you send me an example? So he always shares, yeah? and that's what we need to do. We need to koko each other, support each other, yeah, in, in doing God's work, you know. And, and I cannot see myself in, in any other way not serving God because it's just simple, yeah, by saying, hi, uncle, how are you? Hi, auntie, how are you? Yeah, that's giving, giving everybody a part of Jesus, yeah, because why? God is love, yeah, and as long as we keep sharing love, we're on the right track, yeah? When we, like, envy somebody or we, like, make their day miserable, then we're on the wrong track, yeah? We got to knock ourselves on the head and get back on the right track, yeah? So I was reading something, and I saw this, and it's a quote by this gentleman called Henry Ward Beach, Beecher. And it says, the unthankful heart discovers no mercies, but... The thankful heart will find in every hour some heavenly blessing. So isn't that true? Yeah? Because if we, we continue to do that, then we don't want to get blessed also. Not only the person that we're blessing, yeah, but we get blessed. So that's why we need to remember, what is our purpose on earth? Our purpose is to spread God's word, spread his gospel to everyone. In, in any way, in, in our actions, in our words, in whatever we do, we give love and love will come back to us, yeah? Because God is love. That's all you got to remember. Simple, yeah? God made everything simple, but sometimes we make it hard on ourselves. I don't understand this. What are I getting one Bible? I'm trying to look at that Bible. I get one, not a Bible. I don't understand, yeah? But when it's simple and you just think, what is God trying to tell us? Yeah? Just love the world. Yeah, love everybody. I pray for the people in Maui. Yeah, for all of the, all the hardship that they're going to go through now. Yeah, I pray for all the families that have lost loved ones. Yeah, but hopefully that they were saved. We will see them again. Yeah, when our Lord come. And so the time is getting short. We need to, we need to kick Satan out of our lives. We don't need him. Yeah. And we have, we have God. We have everything. So I thank God for bringing me today, being able to meet all of these lovely names with their faces now. Um, and I thank, I thank you folks for supporting our Kahu here. My brother is a hard worker. He's a hard worker in his music, and he's even a hard worker doing for God. So I thank God for, um, for just our breath of life that he has given us. Um, we thank our parents who had made us go to church at one time. We never liked go to church, but why we got to go to church? You know, we rather go swap meat, right? But um, there is a purpose and a reason why my parents made sure that we went to church. So I'm, I'm, really, I'm really happy. I'm happy for my brother, and I'm proud of my brother. So I ask God to continue to be with your folks' church, continue to help you folks to, to minister to, to people out there so that they come and join you folks. Um, this is a really, a really nice way to, um, to, to have a church service, you know, be the example 
to everybody in this mall. So I thank God again for this beautiful day and that God continue to be with your folks in your daily life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You're not used to the mic. I know. I was trying to make them closer. You kept going away. That's okay. I think they heard. Sometimes they got to stretch the ears. You know, the good speakers, they like stretch the ears. But me, I'm so loud, nobody likes stretch the ear. <laughs> All right. Let's give my sister a big hand. Thank you for sharing. Ooh, hey, you know what? Anybody out there, you like come share? You just got to come down here. Yeah? We, we, we don't mind share, let people share, you know. That's part of the, the style that we have over here. But we're going to continue on with our worship. And I said with this, uh, our um, service with this song. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, work His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship Your holy name, the Son. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord of my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. In love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I'll keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to fight. Bless the Lord of my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. And on that day. And on that day, my, my strength is failing. The end is near, and my time has come. So still my soul will sing presence in thee. Ten thousand years, and never more. Forevermore, bless the Lord of my soul, oh my soul, I'll worship His holy name, one thing I never before, oh my soul. Worship your holy name. One more time. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord of my 
soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. I worship your holy name. I worship your holy name. Thank you, Lord. All right. I want to praise and thank God for this beautiful day and uh, a lovely, lovely, lovely service we have here. It's great to have my sister here. We um, haven't seen in other life together for a while because of COVID and her, uh, her husband. She's been caregiving for her husband. Uh, so, you know, it's good to have her here. And usually she just flies in, doctor, and gone. So it's nice to have her here for the weekend, uh, even though I didn't get to see her to today. But, you know, it's nice to have her here at our service this morning. And I give God the glory for that. Uh, we're going to get some prayer requests. want to also pray. Continue praying for Auntie Doris. Um, she's doing really good. Um, and we pray for strength. And we pray that she can be able to go home soon and and then and also being able to her to come back to our ohana right here and um in where red mall or wherever but we just want to pray for her health want to pray for the family uh also a big mahalo to uh to butch her son and and her daughter-in-law for them to uh, making that connection that auntie can see us live now online and hook her up so that she can turn on a computer and and watch our services until she can be here live. So I want to please and thank God for that. And that was a great time because she's wide awake now. Auntie, we love you. Hope you can see us. And uh, we always pray for you. Continue to pray for Uncle Stephen, Uncle Sweets. He's doing better. But he's really he's still going through a lot of challenges. But we pray for him too. That hopefully one day he'll be able to come and fellowship with us again too. So, um if we can continue praying for, um, what is her name, Jody, from the bakery? Yes. Yes. So let's continue praying for her um, from the Molokai bread, uh, Cecilia, uh, that got burned. Um, is she, uh, I think she's still here. Yeah, she's in the burn unit. And uh, if we continue praying for her healing. As, and not just uh, physical healing, but spiritual healing, and to comfort her and her family while she's away from Molokai. So, also, we continue to pray for our Ohana on, on uh, Maui, Lahaina, Kula, Kihei. And, um, you know, yesterday was another fire that burned like seven acres out there, just past, I think, Kanapali site. So, continue praying for them. You know, it's, uh, it's still, the flames are still kind of. It's it's cindering out there. They're only 85%, so they still got some fire action and some a lot of wind on that island. So we pray for them as they continue to recover, rebuild, and pray, pray especially for their needs. You know, because I know some of them have been a hard time uh, get uh, financial assistance, you know, depending on what their situation is. So we pray for all of them uh, that, that the Lord... You know, have faith that God always provides. He never fails us. That's the one thing we can count on that. You know, when, who are you going to call? Call on God. Don't call Ghostbusters. You're not going to get nothing. Call on Jesus because Jesus never fails. Yeah. Any other prayer requests? Thank you, 
Amen. Oh, I thought that guy in Ambrose was playing tricks on you or something. <laughs> oh. Well, praise God that that uh, you know you you know you rebuked the devil and 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 you prayed to God and God you know revealed it. Yeah. So Jody was saying that um, she she kind of was looking for her contacts and she she never like uh, buy another one and so she rebuked the devil, prayed to God, and lo and behold, God said, "Poof, here it is." Yeah. Whoop. There it is. So, you know, that's how it is. You know, that kind of reminds me of, of Auntie Doris. Because every time she go to um, Ala Moana, she always tell me, yeah, I went around, never had pocket. And I went around, I prayed to God and then came back around. And when pocket opened up right close. And I said, oh, you lucky. You always get Jesus pocket. But, you know, that's how it is. God never fails. But if we continue to pray and ask him, you know, with a sincere heart, he always comes true. Yeah. Yeah, but no, ask him for a million dollars, okay? Because he said he's going to supply our needs, not our wants. You don't need a million dollars. You just, you just, uh, he's going to supply for all your needs. We like, we want a million dollars, but. Yeah. Right on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, li I like that he opened up your heart to receive it, you know. Right on. Thank you for sharing. What is the name? Michael Duruwa. Du. Du. Uh, it's like a song. Du. Uh, du. Uh, infant. Okay. Wow. Okay, let's pray for uh, Michael Durawadu for uh, for his uh, cyst in his brain. Is how old is he? Infant. Wow. Three months. Wow. Young. I also want to pray for my niece. Uh, her baby um, just got uh, baptized yesterday. My sister baptized uh, the, what is her name? Bronx. Bronx. Yeah? Oh, yeah, that's right. His, his middle name is Satoshi. Like me and my son, Satoshi. I'm like, oh, so nice. They name him after uncle. <laughs> and if you can also pray for my niece, uh, Leilani. Um, I heard she has uh, some issues going on with her thyroid. And she's up in uh, in Las Vegas right now seeking some help for her thyroid. Because she that kind of looks like she's still on drugs or something. Her eyes all bulgy. Yeah? So I got to go tease her now. Hey, what you doing? But, you know, you know just pray for her. She's a single, uh, not single, but a uh, struggling parent, <laughs> her, you know, yeah. So in the name of Jesus, we pray for healing upon her from the top of her head down to the bottom of her feet, on the left and the right, surround her with your love. Cle cleanse her from the inside out, Lord. Lay your healing hand upon her and also for bless her family. Uh, so continue praying for them. Anybody else? How are we doing, Auntie? You okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is that guy? I got to pray harder for him because he's supposed to show up today. I want to pray for Brother Tom. You know, it's funny. Wednesday, he came out of the hospital. Uh, he was in there for over a week. And Wednesday, he came out of the hospital. He came straight over here after for say hi with us. Um, he has he had uh, uh, some kind of, um, he got bit in the Philippines. So if you get bit in the Philippines, make sure you get all your shots. But anyway, he got bit in the Philippines and infected his feet and, and he kind of went into his bloodstream, I think. So he was in there for a while um, doing shots and stuff. So we, we praise God that, you know, <laughs> you know, he was like, oh, I got to go see our Wednesday group. 
so he came on Wednesday, so it was nice to see him. We saw him Friday, um, but I never see him today. So I don't know, maybe his leg acting up or his back. We're going to pray for him. Uh, pray for him and uh, his friend Z. Thank God for Z for taking him to the hospital. She came all the way from Las Vegas just to take him to the hospital. So I want to praise and thank God for our sister over there uh, caring and coming all the way down to take him to the hospital. It's two guys hard hit. Him and the other one, my other Filipino brother, Lorenzo. He live right down the street. He never come either. So pray for them two buggers. You know, God is good. We're still working on them. Yeah, Jody. <laughs> I get help now. Jody, she helped me. Hey, call her. Hey, when you guys come in church? So pray for them too, too. Okay. Anybody else? Peter. Uncle Peter. Oh, that's right. We want to pray for uh, Peter Ville. So, you know, Peter used to own the bakery. The one we used to sell the Molokai uh, sweet bread. I remember our church was at Ohana. was selling that Molokai sweet bread, the cookies. So um, he's the owner of that bakery. Um, I don't, he's going to share later on what happened to him. But anyway, he's in the hospital right now, hopefully to get checked out today. So I want to pray for him, too. Uh, he's been a big support for um, not only my church, but actually my sister and her church. He was a big supporter for the fundraisers we did for the Molokai Church. So, yeah. Yeah, because he was, um, they lived on Molokai. And they actually originated from Molokai. So their bakery actually started on Molokai. So I want to pray for him and that God heals him, and hopefully he can come out today. All right? It's good? All right, let's go to the Lord and pray. Lord, I want to praise and thank you for this day. We thank you for the, the many, many, many um, souls that are here receiving you, Lord. Those are online too, Lord, wherever they may come from, Lord, we want to pray for them. Our cousin out there, um, that that uh, she's on every Sunday. We praise and thank you for her and our other cousins on the Big Island too, in Hilo, in Waimea. I want to pray for them, Lord, that you continue to lift them up, continue to encourage them, continue to empower them, and, and you know, just the fellowship. And, and then hopefully when they come into town, we can fellowship together in person. Like my sister, Lord, we thank you so much for giving her traveling mercies over to bless uh, our uh, our niece's um, child, Lord. I want to thank you for that uh, blessing uh, above uh, that uh, little boy, Bronx and Satoshi. <laughs> Pray for them, Lord. Pray for the parents and the grandparents and the whole family. Lord, lay a healing pan on the family. Also pray for all the prayer requests we, we lifted up to you, Cecilia. Pray for her healing and for her spiritual healing, Lord, uh, and comfort, Lord, while she's here. Pray for the Dudawadu family, for uh, baby Michael. Also pray for uh, Auntie Doris and her Ohana, Lord. Pray for her healing, continue healing, strengthening, Lord, to removing the tube. And sealing up her aneurysm in her brain, Lord. We just pray for that, Lord. We pray upon uh, her, her sons that continue to care for her, continue to come together to to work it out, to give mom the best care that she can have. Also want to pray for um, oh, so much prayer requests, Lord, whatever I may have missed, Lord, but we'll pray for that. want to pray for um, Uncle Sweets, that you continue to lift him up in our prayers. Pray for our uh, brother Tom and his, his continued healing on his leg and his body, his back, Lord, that he can uh, be able to go back to work, Lord. And also be with Z until she goes back home, giving her traveling mercies, Lord. But we thank you for her heart of serving, her heart of uh, caring to come down and take uh, our brother to uh, the hospital. But Lord, I also want to pray for brother Pong, that you continue to work upon him, continue to heal him too from his anxieties and and, and his health, Lord, and just free him up to come to to understanding and accepting your will, Lord. And we lift up all of our unspoken prayers and all the prayers that I missed, Lord, but we lift them all up to you, Lord. We thank you for your many blessings. We continue to thank you for all that you do for our church. We thank you for providing areas where we can come and we can gather together. Bless the rest of our members that are not here today, Lord, They continue to work upon their hearts to free themselves up to be able to get on that car, get on that handy van, or get on and just get on over to church, Lord. And if they can't make it here, that they go to some church. They don't have to be here, but that they can make it to some church to get the word of God, that you can continue to share the word within their lives so that they too might make that train to heaven, Lord. 
We give you the honor. We give you all the praise. Lord, bless the food that we're going to partake right after this, Lord. We lift up all our blessings to you, and we thank you for all you do for us. But most of all, we thank you for the love, your undying love that you, you gave your son to free us from the bondage of sin that we might have eternal life. We pray all these things in your precious holy name. We say, May the blessing of Jehovah God, the loving Father, our Lord of love, Jesus Christ, and the love of the Holy Spirit, the Bible with us all now and forevermore. Amen. All right, let's end our service by singing our closing song. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest grace. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest he is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of your praise. I lost the verse. <laughs> Sometimes you got to dance through the dark. Oh, I lost my track of mine. Uh, let's just sing the chorus. Is that okay? <laughs> what? He's Praise you anywhere, praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest grace, give him praise, give him praise in the highest he is worthy, yes he is worthy of all of my praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy, yes, he is worthy of all of my praise. I stood that faithful, faithful of my life, blessings day and night. Countless reasons why I'll give them anywhere. Every promise, give goodness every step, each and every breath. I'll praise it, faithful, faithful of my life. Pressings and I, countless reasons why I'll praise it anywhere. Every promise, give goodness every step. Each and every breath, I'll praise it anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest grace. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy, yes, he is. One more time. He praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest grace. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy, yes, he 
is worthy of all of my praise. I'll praise you anywhere. Oh, mountains, oh, valleys, I know where you're going in there. I'll praise you anywhere. Oh, Kalamaya. Oh, sorry, gang. Have a great day in the Lord. Time for eat. <laughs> I went blank, Loretta.